If you look at a map of Spain, you will see that there is a little dot right on the border with France. That dot is not a typo. It is actually a country and it is called Andorra. It has 70,000 inhabitants and, for some time now, it has been trending in the Spanish media because of news stories like this one about Spain's biggest YouTuber. El Rubius announces that he is moving to Andorra and reopens the debate on the payment of taxes by influencers. El Pai. That is right. Believe it or not, Andorra has become the trendy destination for lots of YouTubers, mainly Spanish ones. But we're not only talking about YouTubers, from artists to professional poker players, Andorra seems to be on the verge of becoming a sort of Silicon Valley of online entertainment. And what is it about this country that attracts so many people? Well, the answer is simple, low taxes. Andorra has one of the lowest tax rates in the world. In Spain, for example, this has generated a tremendous ideological debate. Is it right or wrong to move to another country to pay less taxes? And at this point, we are not going to enter into that debate because there is an even more interesting question. A question that almost nobody has asked in any of the media outlets. And the question is this. Can you name any media companies in Andorra? Probably not, right? And in this video, we're going to explain why. But first, we must digress just a little bit. In the media, Andorra is often described as a tax haven, and that is not true. Andorra may have low taxes, but it is not part of the list of tax havens. At least, not at the moment. Keep this in mind, because it is going to be a very important point throughout this video. What we can say is that Andorra is one of those European microstates. Yes, that's the thing, microstates. But it's one of those European microstates with very, very low taxes. However, look at this graph. Unlike other microstates, such as Liechtenstein or Monaco, Andorra is not particularly rich. In 2018, it had a per capita income of $42,000. In other words, it was more or less at the level of France. Put it another way, for a country that attracts so many millionaires, Andorra is far from being an ultra-rich nation. And the question is, why? Why are there no big companies in Andorra, despite the low taxes? And, more importantly, could Andorra really become a Hollywood for YouTubers? Just imagine such an awful place. In other words, if you were a YouTuber, and you are thinking about moving to this country, is it a good or a bad idea? Today, we are going to answer all of these questions, but first, let's look at some history. The country that wanted to copy Liechtenstein. It is impossible to talk about Andorra without comparing it with Liechtenstein. The guys watching know what I'm talking about. They look like twins. Both are microstates located between large mountains and both of them have low taxes. Liechtenstein has about 30,000 inhabitants. Andorra has 70,000. One point to Andorra. Liechtenstein is in the Alps and Andorra is in the Pyrenees. Both countries are principalities, have maintained some degree of sovereignty for centuries and remained neutral during World War II. Specifically, Andorra allowed many Jews to escape from occupied France to Spain. During the Franco dictatorship in Spain, Andorra allowed the transit of scores of Republican exiles and refugees. At that time, the French president, General de Gaulle, even sent French troops to protect Andorra from a possible Spanish invasion. However, the Andorra we know today was founded in 1982. That is when they approved the constitution they have now, and they cut all their ties of dependence that they had with France. And now, think about it for just one moment. What do you do when you are a small country, isolated between mountains and without any big industries? How can such a country prosper? Well, Andorra decided to imitate the Liechtenstein model. That's how they became a tax haven. Low taxes, low or non-existent VAT, and above all, banking secrecy. In other words, Andorran banks were not obliged to share information about their clients with other states. With this move, Andorra was hoping to become a financial centre, the Switzerland or the Liechtenstein of the Pyrenees. The problem is that they never succeeded. For decades, Andorra was a place to ski, buy cheap boomboxes, after all, it was the 80s, and launder cash. What's more, as it was considered a tax haven by almost all European countries, there were lots and I mean lots of restrictions on doing business with them. The case of Liechtenstein is very different. While Andorra's only major industry is tourism, Liechtenstein has developed its own industry and its own companies. However, all of this changed in 2016. 
The end of banking secrecy in Andorra triggers regularizations. El Vanguardia. Again, just like Liechtenstein had done a decade before, Andorra put an end to banking secrecy. That explains why, since 2018, Andorra disappeared from the list of tax havens in the European Union. And I know what many of you will be thinking. That must have been the end of Andorran banking, right? Quite a crisis for such a small country, right? Well, Actually, it was nothing of the sort. As of 2018, Andorra appeared on the list of possible destinations for many large fortunes. Above all, those who have online businesses. Why? Well, we're going to take a look at that right now. The Hollywood of YouTubers? Imagine that you have a small business on the internet. You can work anywhere in the world. Where would you live? In a country like Spain, where you could find yourself paying more than 45% income tax? Or in Andorra, where you only pay 10%? Remember that this microstate is just 200 kilometers. That's under 124 miles from Barcelona. There's even a Barcelona Andorra helicopter route. Although the official language is Catalan, you can get by in Spanish without any problem. And you're probably thinking, is it really that easy to move to Andorra? And the answer is, yeah, it sort of is. Basically, all you need to do is pay 15,000 euros. That's roughly $18,000 to the Andorran tax authorities and own at least 21% of a local business. If you cannot find a business, you can create one yourself. The share capital is 3,000 euros the same as in Spain. The difference is in the taxes. In Spain, one of Andorra's two neighbouring countries, the maximum corporate tax rate is 25%, while in Andorra, it is 10%. So what do a lot of people do? They set up a company and give themselves a salary of 40,000 euros a year, around 48,000 US dollars. The first 24,000 are tax-free, and the other 16,000 euros are taxed at 5%. The rest of the money is collected in the form of dividends from the company, which are also tax-free. They only pay 10% corporate income tax. As you can see, this looks like a smart move. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go and get myself over to Andorra. But before I go, I should probably ask myself how it is possible for a state to finance itself with such low taxes. In theory, it should be possible. 58% of taxpayers are foreigners, and many of whom have high incomes. And I say it should be possible because the reality is that Andorra has significant holes in its accounts. But we'll talk about that later. So. Is it really that easy? Can the neighbouring countries really not do anything to persecute the rich who migrate to Andorra? The truth is, no. Basically, if you reside in Andorra for more than 183 days of the year and your main centre of economic interest is outside Spain or France, the state can't do anything against you. But for that to work, of course, you have to be willing to live in Andorra and have this tiny country be your main centre of economic interest. And now you'll say, but wait a minute, if a YouTuber has a channel in Spanish, his or her income will come from Spain, right? Well, the answer is no. Advertisements and sponsorships could come from many different countries. The same goes for the audience, who could be from Spain, Latin America, the Middle East, the United States, or literally anywhere on the planet that has Spanish speakers or that Spanish speakers move to. In other words, there is no reason why a Spanish YouTuber should have to pay taxes in Spain if he or she does not live there full time. As it stands, under the current law, there is only one way to prosecute someone who is taxed in Andorra. Prove that he or she does not live or work there. For example, if an Andorran YouTuber set up a company in Spain and all his or her income came from there, then they could have a problem. In fact, there are examples of artists who pretended to live in Andorra and in the end have been nabbed by the Spanish Treasury. Check this out. Shakira will face a criminal case for defrauding the tax authorities of 14.5 million. El Pai. Not Shakira. Turns out she couldn't hide that small and humble fortune in the mountains of Andorra. But why? Why would anyone want to set up a company outside of Andorra? Isn't Andorra supposed to be the ideal place to do business? And this? This is where the catch that nobody ever tells us about this country comes in. You see, when we started researching this video, we thought that Andorra looked set to become a YouTuber Hollywood. Ugh. However, as we searched through the information, one thing struck us. Andorra may already have the highest concentration of famous YouTubers per capita on planet Earth. But strangely, it has no large recording studios, no multi-channel networks, nor any kind of auxiliary companies. And you're probably thinking now, so why is that? What's going on here? Well, we're going to look at that right now. Why Andorra is not Liechtenstein. So, one thing is certain. Andorra knows how to attract large fortunes. But back to the first question of this video. Do you know any Andorran companies? For example, 
Ireland is also a country famous for its low taxes. That explains, in part, why the big tech companies chose this country to set up their European headquarters. Google, Facebook and Apple all have huge offices in Ireland. But we are not only talking about foreign companies. Ryanair and Primark are international companies that were started in Ireland. And something similar happens with Liechtenstein. You can drive through Liechtenstein from north to south in 15 minutes. And throughout the entire trip, you will see factories and offices, just one after the other. Factory, office, factory, office. And I know what many of you are thinking. Liechtenstein? I don't know any companies from Liechtenstein. Before I started watching this video, I didn't know there was a Liechtenstein. Well, you actually probably do know companies from there. Have you heard of one called Hilti? They are the world leader in tools and construction machinery. In fact, many of you probably have a Hilti drill in your toolbox. And no matter where you live, if you go to any construction site, you will find structures designed by that company. they have a global presence. However, the most important factory and research and development center is in Schkan, which is a small village of 6,000 inhabitants located in the Principality of Liechtenstein. But that's not all. The next time you go to a dentist, and I know what some of you are thinking, you're thinking, Grant, look at your teeth. You've never been to a dentist. You are British, and you may be right. But the next time you go, take a look at the machines around you. I'm sure many of them will have Ivoclar Vivident logo on them. This is a company which is the world leader in prosthetics and machinery for dentists. And once again, their main factory is also in Schkan. Lichtenstein. So, by way of a comparison, what do you think is the most important technology company in Andorra? Andorra Telecom? The public company dedicated to providing internet and telephone services to the inhabitants of, wait for it, Andorra. Wow. Watch out, Silicon Valley. Andorra is coming to take you on. In all the listings of Andorran companies that we have found, the vast majority are only sole proprietorships. These are companies that don't even have a website. So you see, my dear visual politic friends, having low taxes is not synonymous with having a competitive economic system. And Andorra is the perfect example of that. But what is Andorra's problem? Why haven't they managed to create large companies? The first reason is the land. In such a small and mountainous country, it is difficult to find land to build offices. Look at this news story from 2020. <laughs> New luxury development in the center of Escaldes e Gordani is an impressive skyscraper, CISA Real Estate. This impressive skyscraper has 20 floors and it is the first tall building to be built in Andorra. And look carefully because it's a residential building. That is, it's not an office building. So what problem does Andorra have that means no one wants to set up companies there? We'll tell you that now. <laughs> From tax haven to corporate hell. Imagine, and this will be harder for some of you than it is for others, that you are a successful YouTuber and you live in Andorra. So far, there's no problem. The problem is that you want to grow. So let's suppose that you have your company created, but now you want to go one step further and turn it into a medium-sized production company with script writers, editors, and animators. Well, in the first year, you're only allowed to hire two people. That's right, two people. But wait, because this is not the worst of it. Andorran labor law is very protectionist. And the premise is Andorans first. That means that, by law, you will be obliged to prioritize Andorran candidates over everyone else. Hiring foreign talent means going through bureaucratic hell just to justify that it is better than local talent. That explains why, apart from the big fortunes, Andorra is incapable of attracting talent. To continue the comparison, Liechtenstein has become an entire hub of medical and high precision industry. If you're an engineer, you can try to find a job there. Every day, thousands of people who live in Austria and Switzerland cross the border to work in Liechtenstein's industrial estates. Meanwhile, Andorra only attracts ski instructors and waiters. But hold on a moment, because that's not the only issue. Remember I told you that Andorra has not been able to create large banks? Well, that's also a problem. Since the end of banking secrecy, Andorran banks are subject to more bureaucratic controls than banks anywhere else. Switzerland has several of the largest banks in the world. Liechtenstein has the LGT Bank, which is owned by the royal family. Seems legit. To give you an idea, Standard & Poor's gives this bank an A plus rating, and it is considered to be one of the most reputable private banks in the world. Well, Andorra has not managed to take off in the financial field either. For example, its most significant bank is AndBank. According to the rating agency Fitch, it has a rating of BBB, triple B. And no, B is not exactly good, no matter what I may have tried to tell my mum about my grades. 
But wait, we're still not done yet. Let's continue with our YouTuber example. Imagine we are an online creator and we want to grow our business. Okay, we can't bring in outside talent and we're having trouble getting funding, but, but, that's okay. We could partner with an e-commerce company and launch our own branded merchandise. It may surprise you, but this is the main source of income for many YouTube channels. For example, Sally Wilt in Germany or Jeffree Star in the United States have set up real empires by selling their own products through their channels. The problem is, is that Andorra is not part of the European Union. It's not even part of the common market. While Liechtenstein serves as a bridge between Switzerland and the European Union, Andorra is not a competitive place to have a store. So how is it possible that Andorra attracts so many e-commerce owners? This, this is why. Dropshipping in Andorra, a very profitable business model. Advantia. Exactly. Most of the e-commerce sites registered in Andorra use the dropshipping method. And what is dropshipping? And why does it sound dirty? It's not dirty. All it is, is instead of having your own warehouse, you use part of another one. For example, let's say we set up a shoe store. I manage the online store from Andorra. When the Spanish customer makes a purchase, the warehouse in China sends the shoes to the customer. In other words, I don't even touch the shoes. This option is very good for e-commerce sites that are just starting, but it has two major drawbacks. One, very low margins, and two, drawn out delivery times. Indeed, many companies in the industry got started using this technique, but as soon as they acquire a volume, they end up using their own warehouses. And that's where Andorra's custom situation is anything but competitive, despite its low taxes. In other words, if Andorra wants to become the Silicon Valley of e-commerce, the Hollywood of YouTube, or the Las Vegas of online poker, it had better reform. And I'm talking serious reforms. And now I know what some of you are thinking. Why do they want to start companies? After all, the country is doing quite well as it is, right? And yes, you are right. Millionaires are to Andorra what oil is to the Gulf countries, their main source of income. The problem is, is that it is difficult to control the influx of high income professionals. And if there are no business ties to retain them, it is likely that many professionals will end up leaving. Even more so if we take into account that Andorra has no cultural integration policies. Quite the contrary, which incidentally is another difference with Liechtenstein. If they leave, it could put a huge hole in the country's public coffers. And, strange as it may seem, they know what it means to have a deficit in Andorra. Andorra's 2019 budget presents the worst deficit in the last decade, La Vanguardia. This news is from 2019, one year after Andorra ceased to be declared a tax haven. That is, one year after the wave of YouTubers, poker players, and small businessmen started arriving. Well, in that fiscal year, Andorra closed with a deficit of only 2.7%. For this year, 2021, they estimate that they will close with a deficit of 16%. But how can you have a deficit problem in your country when your country is full of millionaires? Well, because the nation earns little and spends more than it should on what? On things like this. Andorra La Sioux Airport could have several companies operating by next winter. Snow places. You heard that right. Despite having only 70,000 inhabitants, Andorra shares an airport with Spain. Well, at the time of making this video, this airport has no commercial flights and cost Andorans 300,000 euros a year. That's over $360,000. It may not seem like a lot of money, but remember that the total revenue for Andorra in 2021 will be 397 million euros. So, dear government of Andorra, if you are watching this video, I think you have some homework to do. If you want more information, you can see the interview we did with the Prince of Liechtenstein, Hans Adam II, here. It's in English, but I'm sure it will give you some ideas. Before finishing, I would just like to quickly thank Andorra Services, Vicente Rojo and Samuel Rodriguez from e-commerce news for helping us with the research of this video. Meanwhile, the question is over to you. Do you think Andorra is going to make the necessary reforms to become a YouTuber's Hollywood? <sighs> or are there much better places to live? What do you think is the best place to live and set up a business? Leave your answer in the comments below. As always, we really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit a like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.